Oh man. Hey there, Postal here. Dang it. Dang it. Dang this map. Um, so, we are on a bad map, but we're not here to talk about the bad map. We are here to talk about this particular plane. Um, so, we are in the Key 162 Mark III. This is Tier 10 plane. Um, and it's a plane I find a little frustrating, to be honest. Um, let's talk about the good things about it, though, because there are some really good things about it. It's a quite fast plane, actually. Um, it better be with these two goofy-looking uh, engines right on top, and it's a very small plane, so it's like power-to-weight rate ratio. It's got to be pretty good. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying it's got to be pretty good. Um... I got to try to signal for my team to come to the center with me here. For us to win this, we're going to have to take the center part. Um, but you're seeing right here one of the frustrating parts of this plane is its ability to hit anything can sometimes be pretty ridiculous. Like, how difficult is it to hit this plane? Very difficult. There we go. So little tiny maneuverable planes can be even more difficult. To hit. So you've got two 30 millimeter cannons, which are actually very very strong um, cannons. It's just getting them to actually hit their target can be very 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 frustrating. Sometimes. It's weird, uh, as it, it just is weird with 30 millimeter cannons in general, because um, they'll hit super hard. And then sometimes they just won't hit at all. So that's why most people don't like planes that only have 30 mil two 30 millimeter cannons on it, like the Swift, the F2, FW252, and the Key 162s. So they can all be very, very frustrating. We're good enough to get the center section here, which is incredibly important for us to be able to win this battle. It's we're going to need um, the center section for sure. So as fast as the key 162 is, it's definitely not MIG fast. Um, and I don't have pneumatic control assist on this plane because you can't have pneumatic control assist. You can't have um, engine cooling on this plane because if you have anything that that like that, then you won't have anything that can help repair your wings and engines that are invariably going to get knocked out. And so I don't have the ability to just pneumatic control assist on a whim, like I would in the Swift, or for that matter, um, let's see, here's the other thing, like now I've outturned him, but can I actually hit him? In the meantime, they're slowly taking the, the center sector from us. Not even slowly anymore. Alright, so I've killed him. Unfortunately, too little too late. Mainly because my guns won't hit. And yeah, so my wings and engine get knocked out in this all the time. Like, believe me, I've experimented quite a bit in the setup. Um, anything, any, uh, you need to have um, your engine restart on here because... Your engine's gonna get knocked out no matter what you do. I've put, I've, I've set this up for armor. I've set this up for, um, ah. Uh, I've set this up for speed. I've set it up for maneuverability. I've set it up for all that stuff. And setting it up for um, survivability just doesn't really work. No matter if you've got, um, no matter if you've got all the armor in the world on it. It's still not enough. You're still going to get your engine knocked out. You're still going to have those situations. So if you're always going to get your engine knocked out, well then, you might as well just have an engine restart on here. And that way you can focus your equipment on something that's going to make the aircraft more maneuverable or more speedy, whatever you're looking for. And just, you know, put your engine back in when it gets knocked out eventually. 
odd that I actually haven't had, and you know, knock on wood, I haven't had my engine knocked out this game. But I get it knocked out at least twice, twice a match. Same with my wings. My tail, not so much, but my wings definitely, definitely get knocked out a lot. Guess I haven't really gotten hit too much this battle. Let's uh, get our guns to be pulled off a little bit here. I haven't really been able to take advantage of it, but this plane does have a lot of speed. again. Nope. Whoa. Hello, sir. Make should definitely be using his altitude performance against us. Tap, 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 tap. Gun seized up, unfortunately. Let's get down low. So this plane actually does do pretty well versus um, ground attack planes. Because 30 millimeter cannons just always do well against ground attack planes. Ground attack planes aren't moving around all crazy like. And, um, you know, it just allows you to, to take out that chunk of damage. It's the maneuverable planes that cause issues when you're in the, um, when you're in the key. Let's go ahead and head back to the center. Unfortunately, they are up on us on sectors. Let's see if I can do anything about that. About Got a garrison, that's good. Man, these, these, uh, and these guns overheat way too freaking quickly, don't they? Nope, it's the end of that. That's the end of this game. Our airfield is under enemy control. We need to retake the initiative. Dang it. Fortune is not able to hang on to that center. Um, you kind of see the most frustrating aspect of this particular plane, honestly, is the wild variability of the guns. Um, you know, if, if I had more consistent guns, uh, a lot of these planes that I was taking way too long to um, kill would already be dead, right? Like this guy. Would have already been dead. So, yeah, they hit excellently. They hit super, super strong. Almost got us. But you need to get them to hit. Let's see if I can't get this sector. Excellent. Let's see if I can't get the center. I might still be able to win this. So as fast as this plane is, unfortunately, you can't reload the um, engine cooling on it, right? Attention all fighters. Freaking oh, I was gonna say I assume that there's gonna be a MIG on me soon. Trying to, I don't want to spend too much time going after the damn MIG when the reality is we need to capture this sector. And it doesn't matter because my engine got knocked out again. Because my guns are not hitting when I want them to. Good. Finally. Come on, come on, come on. I hate you guns. Thank you. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Just not able to do enough. Terrible map, but uh, this really, uh, I'm going to keep this game because it shows you the highs and the lows of this particular plane. In fact, we didn't even get to really get too much into the 
the strengths of this plane, other than it's really good at, at um, turning. <laughs> Let's head back. All right, so we were able to get 17 kills there, 6,500 damage, 15,000 personal points, a little over 500 capture points by defending that sector. Um, but this does, I think this does show you the good and the bad of this plane. And there's more good to it. I don't want to make it sound like this is like just the world's worst plane. I just don't think this is a, a plane, like you don't want this to be your first tier 10 fighter. You're going to be like, what the flip? Kind of like the Swift. Um, the first tier 10 fighter I had was a Swift. And I was like, what the hell did I get myself into? Um, I had this great, great tech line all the way up to tier 9. And then you get to tier 10 and you're like, what the heck? The key line is very similar. Um, you know, you've got this one play style all the way up to tier 8. And then suddenly 9 and 10, you get these things. And you're like, what the flip a dip? What did I do to deserve this? Um, and it's not that these are bad planes. It's just they have issues. Um, so we didn't get the opportunity to actually you know, use its full capabilities. And what I mean by that is it has really good airspeed. The, the, but we're at tier 10, so like everything's got good airspeed. But the like power to weight ratio, as we want to say here, is really good with this plane. I mean, it's a pretty darn small plane, right? Um, F-86 is, is a small, small plane. And F-86 is, is just slightly longer, right? You got things like the Swift, which are definitely bigger, MiG-15. So compare that, LA-15 is pretty small, isn't it? Um, you know, compare that along the lines there, and you just got like little tiny, like little tiny fuselage, little tiny fuselage, right? The wings stick out a little bit, but if you, anybody's ever gone for a Key 162, you know how, how wily they can be, how difficult they can be to hit. That's definitely one of the benefits of this particular plane. Utilize your maneuverability for sure. Um, and you know, keep in mind that that's going to be your biggest strength. Your ability to boost and um, in short, short intervals, of course, and your maneuverability. Your altitude performance is one of the weakest on the, uh, of the tier 10 uh, light fighters. It's better than the Yak-30. And that's it. Um, everything else is going to have significantly better altitude performance. So your bread and butter is going to be down low uh, with quotes around it. Um, the the thing that kind of sets this plane apart is going to be its 30 millimeter cannons. You saw how well they work when they hit. The thing is you just got to get them to hit. So going dogfighting MiG-15s. Dogfighting, uh, my previous battle was F-86. Um, I you can do it, but you need to realize that more often than not, the enemy plane, when you're dogfighting, is going to like weave in between your two 30mm cannons. You're not throwing out a bunch of volume, right? You're not in an F-86 that's just throwing out 50 um, cal machine gun bullets and you know, event, you know, you're know, you going to hit more than not. You're not in a MiG-15 where you've got two 23s and a 37, or a Yak-30 and an LA-15 where you've got three cannons. Uh, 1101 has four cannons, right? So this this plane, you, you miss a lot more than you hit, especially when you're dogfighting, which is kind of disappointing because this plane really would be a great dogfighter if it had more consistent guns. But the 30 millimeter cannons are very, very good against ground attack planes. It's very, very good against um, heavy fighters, uh, multi-rolls, anything that has significantly less maneuverability and is a little bit chunkier um, you know, this plane can tear those up for sure. So I want to I want to go ahead and take a look here at the equipment um, as it's been sitting here, and then we'll take a look at the pilot. I'm not specialized on this plane. I'm getting close though. I've just done a, a basic balance build when it comes to the equipment. Um, you, I could conceivably, I suppose, instead of doing polished skin, I could put the um, um, lightweight wing frame on here. In fact, I could just show you guys how that would be done. Put lightweight wing frame on there and uprated engine on here. And you can flip that around to start off with just because that won't take away from your maneuverability as a non-specialized plane. And see, my maneuverability has actually gone up one where putting on polished skin would take away from the maneuver really. So this is really the setup that you should have it on, and that's the setup I'm gonna put it on. Boop. 
Once I specialize it, then yeah, you can put on the polished skin, get a little bit more airspeed out of it. Um, what you may notice is my consumables. I've got this plane set up like no other uh, flight fighter except for the Key 162 Mark I. And that is um, on my consumables for the airframe. You've got to have emergency control system. For the consumables for the engine, you've got to have the manual engine restart. I've tried so hard to have the pneumatic control assist on the airframe, and I'll certainly add it once I specialize it, but my wings get knocked out way too often. Th this battle was an anomaly, 100% an anomaly. The, the vast majority of the times, 95% of the time, I'm getting my engine and wings knocked out each at least once per game, and probably 50% of the time, at least twice per game, I'm getting my engine and wings knocked out. Previous battle that I was in versus the F-86, I won that battle, but I only had like 10,000 personal points and didn't really do a whole lot. The, the enemy failed more than I won, to be honest. Um, but my engine got knocked out twice, my wings got knocked out twice. And that's a standard battle for me. Flip a coin and that's, you know, half the battles are going to be like that. I've set this plane up for survivability. I've set this plane up to be, you know, full survivability and it doesn't do anything. The, 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 the survivability metrics are so low on this plane, it's just, it's terrible. And so setting it up for survivability marginally improves really crappy metrics. And so, you know, you're going to still catch on fire. You're still going to have re um, your resistance to damage is going to be crap no matter what you do. So rather than wasting my equipment energy on that and having minimal returns, I've decided to set up my equipment for this balance type build for my accuracy. And when I get my engine or my wings knocked out, I just, replay, I just repair them. And okay, move, move along. Um, rather than setting all this up for survivability, having you know pneumatic control assist and, and um, engine cooling, which would be nice, having that on here, but then still getting my engine and wings knocked out at least once a game, um, and not being able to do anything about it because I don't have a way to get them um, put back in there. So I've had this setup. It's definitely my favorite setup with this plane. Believe me, again, I've, I've tried all kinds of setups on this particular plane. Um, and this is the least frustrating, the most impactful to me. As far as consumable for the um, cockpit, definitely first aid dressing. And the reason being is because you want to have your pilot back in um, as quickly as possible. And not just because you want your accuracy to be back to, to, to maximum amount, which you do, of course. Um, and, and, you know, once you've got your pilot back in, that means that your universal skills of Marksman 1 and Marksman 2, if you've got Marksman 2, are back and ready to go. But also because your firefighter skill, you're in a Japanese light fighter, you need to have firefighter skill. Um, again, you can have this plane set up completely to avoid fires, but it's still going to catch on fire. And the best thing for you to do is to simply put the one, uh, one point skill on your firefighter skill here. And because this skill works as you're actively, um, you know, maneuvering, you're always actively maneuvering in a key 162 or key, any of the keys or any of the, jo um, excuse me, any of the um, zeros. And so you might as well just plug this in here. And if you did catch on fire, which you will, you're already maneuvering and you'll have it out in like two seconds maximum. I, I love this skill for the Japanese planes. It very, very well mitigates um, being set on fire because you're going to get set on fire, right? I've gone for Marksman 1, Marksman 2 as my next two skill points. I literally did Firefighter first, then Marksman 1, then Marksman 2. I've got um, eight skill points on this particular pilot, so I've gone with Aerodynamics Expert. It has a little bit of a buff for me. It'll have even more of a buff once I've specialized the plane and I've got the airframe. Then after that because um, this helps both speed and maneuverability. After that, I will go with um, the aerobatics expert um, and really set that up for my, my 10th point. I don't know what I'm doing after the 10th point, but we'll figure that out together. So this plane can be very, very enjoyable. It can be very good. It is kind of like a hybrid. It's like mixing a, um, a Swift and a Yak-30. Kind of what it feels like, right? And again, I don't have mine specialized, so uh, I'm definitely going to be able to maximize maneuverability and to a lesser extent airspeed. But it's the guns. It's all about the guns. Either the guns are excellent, they're working and doing exactly what you want them to do, and you're, you're doing great damage, 
Or you're gonna have situations, and more likely, you're gonna have situations where you're trying to shoot something and it's like, hmm, hmm, this is taking a lot longer than it should. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So as long as you become one with the 30 millimeter cannons, as long as you be, um, understand that you're going to have situations where um, the guns just aren't working with you, that you'll be okay mentally. <laughs> Keep in mind, when in doubt, aim further out with 30 millimeter cannons. Give them more lead, and that way um, you'll have a little bit more success when it comes to this particular plane. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. This was a request uh, in my Discord channel. Um, somebody wanted to have this particular plane um, highlighted. Again, it's not. I don't think this is a bad plane. I just think you've got to be in the right mentality to not get overly frustrated by playing this plane, um, of getting everything in the, and its brother knocked out as far as your engine and wings and tail are concerned. Uh, the tail, not so much for whatever reason, but the wings and the engine for sure, or being set on fire, or the guns missing. But if you can put all that to the side, honestly, I know it sounds like just funny to say, but if you can put that to the side, this can be an enjoyable plane and it can be very impactful and it can be fun. And you guys know me, is if it's a fun plane at the end of the day, I'm okay with it. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I will uh, definitely do another video on this once I've got it specialized uh, in the, the distant future. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you've gone down the key line, this is what you've got to look forward to. After tier eight, after the key 94, what, Mark II, um, you get the jet engines and you lose 20 millimeter cannons. You just have two 30 millimeter cannons. So the tier nine is very much similar to this plane. And I recommend the same setup on the tier nine as far as equipment and definitely as far as consumables is concerned. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, take advantage of that. And I hope this was helpful. Otherwise, have a great day. Bye.